this is an amorphic full frame lens for a pro camera and this is an amorphic lens as well but for the s23 ultra and as you can see they're completely different but there is something in common between them and unlike regular lenses these two add character to footage just look at those images Pretty cool right but why would you use one of those for your phone can a smartphone truly rival professional camera in the world of filmmaking and if yes then in what case so today i'm gonna compare these two setups put them to the test and show you the results so let's find out but first here are some things you need to know about anamorphic lenses you see, everyone loves sharp, crisp image, clinical look, no distortion. But an amorphic lens does the opposite. It is actually adding more imperfection to your footage, therefore adding some character. It also increases the field of view of your frame. Now let's compare this frame taken with the S23 Ultra X1 camera and with an amorphic lens on. So this is a shot without any lens attached filmed with 1x main camera. And here is the anamorphic lens attachment. And now in real time, the difference between the anamorphic and regular field of view. You see how much is data gained on both sides? And similarly with this 150mm lens, here is regular spherical 150 and here is the anamorphic one. So essentially it's like having a wider field of view but with a telephoto lens bokeh blur, which definitely adds a cinematic touch to the image. Now unlike iPhones, the Android phones offer manual controls for the exposure right out of the box. And this Galaxy phone is a great example. The manual settings here are exactly like on the bigger full frame camera. So that means you can achieve motion blur and bring that cinematic feeling to your image. And it is awesome since both of the lenses have the outer threads for attaching the ND filters to control your exposure. Now it's not necessary to have the ND filters on the lens at all times, but if you set all the settings properly on your S23 Ultra or any other camera per se, in that case your footage will be overexposed if you're filming during bright day. A bit later in this video I will get to the image quality on both of these cameras but first let me tell you in which scenario the S23 Ultra can actually be the almighty full frame camera setup and it is out of focus. 9 out of 10 times you will get the perfect shot with the S23 Ultra even with the lens on but with this bigger one it's manual focusing only. Although the lens has all the markings on the body so you can accurately precisely know the focus and distance between your subject and the sensor but it definitely takes more effort to film video videos with this one, especially if you're filming everything by yourself. And let's not forget about the flares, another signature part of the anamorphic lenses. Now these lenses for mobile filmmaking come in two different colors, giving your image gold or blue flaring. The color also affects a bit the overall of the feeling of your image, making it cooler or warmer. However, once you hit a super bright object, the flares are a bit too much in your face. Now the Sony setup though on the other hand has only blue flares and I'm in love with this quality. The flares are sleek, much more subtle and overall I feel like they won't just start invading your frame unlike the ones on the S23 Ultra. It just feels levels above. Obviously there's so much more optic elements here and it's a portrait lens after all where the mobile filmmaking lens is a wider 24mm so it's kind of hard to compare them really but still there is a big difference in the flare quality. Now one thing where this lens is fall short comparing to the conventional spherical lenses or stock lenses on the phone is the image stabilization and it is probably one of the biggest downsides for me in using these setups. When using the serial lens on the full frame Sony camera, every little shake on the camera it makes the footage practically unusable. Even when I adjust the focus, this little vibration it just affects the image so I have to use a monopod or tripod for the best results. And the same with the S23 Ultra with the anamorphic lens on. And now I'm filming in 8K and the image stabilization is turned on. And look, this is the image quality I'm getting right now. Let me know what you think in the comments and see what are this thing too. I'm trying to hold as still as possible right now at the moment. And I think it looks good, but it does need a gimbal or a stabilizer or just a tripod to avoid any of the unnecessary shakes. Yes, the phone has incredible image stabilization, but when paired with an external lens, you know, you get this jello effect. So the best way to use this setup is either with a gimbal or a tripod monopod, because you have to disable the image stabilization inside the phone. 
Okay, now let's dive in into the heart of the comparison and it's the image quality. It's important to consider factors like distortion, sharpness, flares and overall cinematic appeal. And then based on that, I'm curious to see if images from both of the setup match each other when editing. You see, the S23 Ultra and Amorphic Lens is designed to get wide shot. Yes, you can even make some kind of talking head kind of vlog videos, but you would need to use a gimbal for that and you need to avoid excessive shakes. And I used it mostly for the landscape shots or establishing shots just to show the overall scene. Now I want to address some of the comments you have left in the previous episode about the anamorphic lens. Yes, the distortion is present and it's called barrel distortion, which is a result of the optical design inherent to anamorphic lenses. The barrel distortion effect is most prominent when using anamorphic lenses with wider focal length. As the focal length increases, the distortion tends to become less noticeable, like with this one. Filmmakers often use this characteristic creatively or when they want to achieve a vintage and cinematic look. Now the opposite thing happens happens with this full-frame 150mm lens. Since it's a telephoto lens and it doesn't have any barrel distortion, however, it does have the oval blurred bokeh that anamorphic lenses are also famous for. The S23 Ultra with the lens gives the sharpest image in the center of the frame. But I compared it with other competitors like Moment and such, and I have to say that they give worse results, especially in the corners with the blur. And I even had to pull out the iPhone for that quick test because all of the other brands do not make mounts suitable for the S23 Ultra. So if I were to judge the image quality of the freewheel lens, I would say it's the best anamorphic glass for mobile filmmaking out there, out of all competitors. However, there are some things that could be improved in terms of the sharpness in the corners and overall flare control. So I hope Freewell will listen and make some further adjustments in the future. Now if I were to critique the image of this serial lens, I wouldn't have much to say to be honest. The image is crisp and surprisingly for most anamorphic lenses I can focus really close without using additional accessories. For those who hears about anamorphics for the first time, well you can't really focus up close and you do need additional lens element attachments with other lenses. So despite being a very niche telephoto lens, I could use it for landscape shots, capturing all the details and beautiful scenery, but also it is possible to use the lens for capturing the details tail shots or even some insects, which is awesome. So surprisingly, they can be used together to tell the story better in the anamorphic widescreen aspect ratio. And I would say that full frame Sony camera provides clear image, but still the Samsung Galaxy isn't too far behind from it. So it makes the setup just perfect for setting up a scene with a wider shot and then following up with the full frame setup, expanding on it. Just have a look. from image quality, it is crucial to assess the ease of use and portability of these lenses. And let me tell you, the full frame setup is huge, yeah, it's just the lens. Well, I tried to use it with the Sony ZV-1 on purpose because it's probably one of the most compact and smallest full frame cameras out there, but I still needed some additional equipment and had to use it with a tripod or monopod at all times because holding it and filming handheld it's practically impossible because it's that heavy and it gets super heavy after a couple of minutes when you film with it. While this, the S23 Ultra and the Morph Clans attachment offers more streamlined experience and ultimately the choice between these two options, it will depend on your specific needs, budget and level of expertise. So definitely this one is easier to use. So it's two completely different tools that can work together and deliver stunning results in the right hands and I cannot wait to squeeze more out of the new upcoming phones so as always if you enjoyed this video do not forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update like this video to support my channel and let's reach 50k soon and remember whether you're using a smartphone or a professional setup it's your creativity and passion that truly brings your vision to life until next time and bye bye